Namaste. I am an Ayurvedic traditional medical practitioner from India. And uh, I think many of you are not familiar with that uh, system of medicine, Ayurveda, though many of such complementary and alternative medical systems are gaining popularity among the public as well as the scientific community. So today I will be speaking about some salient features of Ayurveda which makes it unique and acceptable as a medical system, especially in the case of cancer. Next slide. Cancer, the details of cancer, in fact, uh, can be found in classical Ayurvedic treatises, which are as old as 500 uh, BC. And uh, interestingly, the science, uh, the, the uh, disease to which it is correlated is Arbuda in Sanskrit, which interestingly means that which harms and separates, or that which is multi-million in number. Interestingly, perhaps, though this is very cryptic in nature, uh, I think this is perhaps the oldest scientific explanation about the malignant multiplication of uh, the cells. But that's history, you can forget that conveniently. But today in this short presentation I will be speaking things which are very simple, but uh, forms the core basic uh, aspects of uh, Ayurveda in understanding and managing cancer. The word Ayurveda is a Sanskrit term in which Ayu means life. So you can see that in this particular slide, uh, it's, it's a structure that is supported by three legs, which is a triad of body, mind and soul, or spirit or consciousness as you would like to call it. It's depicted as a tripod because it has significance, like this camera. It can sustain a structure only when these three legs are intact. Minus one, the structure falls. Similarly, whether we are in a state of health or state of ill health, it will have an involvement of or have an overall impact upon all these three planes of existence, that is physical, mental and spiritual. So the concept of Ayurveda is, that especially in approaching a disease condition like cancer, it is purely from this holistic perspective. The second uh, thing which I would like to call, tell about you is about the concept of balance. So this classical reference, it tells that like wind, sun and moon controls the activities of the universe, the three physiological principles inside the body, Vada, Pitta and Kaba, which we call as Tridoshas or three functional aspects of the thing, they control the physiological activities. This is based on a concept that man is the microcosm of the macrocosm, or simply put, it is, we are just a miniature representation of this mighty uh, universe. They are supposed to be in a state of balance when we are healthy and when there is an imbalance, when these three functional principles are in a state of imbalance, we are in a state of ill health. So the concept, the basic purpose of Ayurvedic treatment, any uh, treatment uh, sought from Ayurveda is to bring back this balance. So this balance is supposed to be within us and also with the universe outside us. The third aspect I would like to tell is regarding the process. Quite different from the other medical systems, uh, Ayurveda do not see body as a fixed anatomical structure. Anatomy is definitely given an importance, but beyond that we try to look at what we call as nutritive process. So we say that, Ayurveda say that body is a nutritive process. It starts with the basic digestion, and the absorbed essence, they call us Radharasa, it goes through this transformative process involving seven layers, seven stages of transformation to ultimately lead what is called as ojas or the immunity or the energy level. So this process should go on and on without delay, without interruption and without any stagnation. To the modern medical community, we usually we say that all the major classification of cancer, whether it is carcinoma, sarcoma, lymphoma, or leukemia, it falls with, the, falls with different stages of this transformative process. So the second purpose of Ayurvedic treatment from a holistic perspective is to reinstall or make this process going on and on, and on without any interruption. The fuel for this process to, uh, to 
carry out uh, without an interruption is food, and food is considered to be a sub pillar that supports life. And according to Ayurveda, we are also discussing yesterday that there is nothing that is universally good and there is nothing that is universally bad. And we need to select the suitable food based on one's condition and constitution. That's why Ayurveda is an individualistic treatment. So the treatment is also for the patient and not for the disease. And the selected suitable food should be taken in a quantity that is moderate. The purpose of giving too much of importance to quality and quantity is to ensure that we are routinely, regularly on only light and digestible uh, food items, thus reducing the burden of that nutritive process which is very essential. And generally, as a recommendation for patients or those who uh, would like to uh, be on a diet which, is, uh, which can prevent diseases like cancer, we say positive foods or in Sanskrit term it is sattvic foods. Uh, two examples popularly even accepted by other sciences is uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Fifth one, it's very unique to Ayurveda, is that we consider body has two aspects. That is a pure aspect and an impure aspect. The way we live, what we eat and what we do are supposed to nourish only the pure aspects of the system. And medicine and treatments are required to reinstall that purity whenever there is, when we lose it. But even if we lead a very uh, healthy life, uh, which contribute only to the pure aspect of the body, there could be factors outside our control, like say pollution, which will in fact add on to the purity within, impurity within. And present day, all of us know that we are more and more exposed to such factors outside our control, like the environmental pollution, and it has become easier and quicker for a normal cell to turn malignant. So to remove impurities from the body, which will in fact, if added upon, ends up in disease, in this case cancer, Ayurveda advises something very unique called as cleansing treatments, which we call as panchakarma. This is something which is very significant because we give ultimate importance in women's health because we are talking about women's cancer specifically here, we give importance to the menstrual cycle. Interestingly, it is a menstrual period is compared to a, a flowing river which removes impurities at, as it flows. So a patient who is a women patient seeking an Ayurvedic treatment for, to prevent or to uh, prevent the advancement of a cancer, we first, the course of treatment would be to correct the menstrual cycle if there is any problem with that. So it is essential to maintain, right from menarche till menopause, it is essential to maintain a proper and uh, menstrual periods. And menopause is of course a problem because body's natural cleansing system is supposed to uh, pause or stop. And th there are certain diet advices, treatments and medicine to make the transition smoother and of course uneventful. Next. This is not an Ayurvedic picture but just I have adapted it. In, when it comes to cancer uh, treatment, it's, everybody knows that, it's also mentioned in few of the speakers, that early detection in fact makes the treatment easier. In Ayurveda, all disease formations are classified, in fact, it goes through six stages and ultimately manifest as a disease where the prognosis could be uh, dif uh, difficult. Now. So, there are tools and these st six stages are called as Kriyakalas or six opportunities or six phases where you can, the physician can interfere so that that disease or that minor abnormalities do not aggravate and manifest as a, an incurable disease. And Ayurveda has developed subtle tools to understand the such abnormalities and there are inter interventions at each stage recommended so that the disease do not progress or at least if possible it does not manifest even. So these are the three stages very similar to the uh, modern concepts of uh, hyperplasia, dysplasia and uh, invading carcinoma, the first three stages of accumulation, aggravation and migration as we call it in Sanskrit. So early detection is also possible. When it comes to the treatment, it is three types, physical, mental and spiritual. Physical treatment involves the, the, the medicines, the diet and other uh, treatments and uh, it also involves uh, uh, certain um, um, purificatory uh, treatments if the patient can, in fact, has the strength to undergo that. 
when it comes to the mental it is just helping the patient to overcome uh, the problems he or she faces with the mind because of the diagnosis or the treatments and the prognosis it's just nothing but helping the patient to gain control over the mind and overcome the negative influences the third is spiritual it again these are just practices or rituals based on one's own belief but in a modern context a secular context i should say that this is just the activities like what's happening here like involving in charitable and humanitarian activities falls under the third uh, treatment which is spiritual in nature next actually for a manifested condition when a patient comes to a hospital like uh, uh, an a, any ayurvedic hospital in the country in india the for a treatment of cancer it is offered in three forms one as an alternative medical system totally the modern medicine patient offer prefer to take ayurvedic treatment and not the conventional medical system but we try to follow a very ethical pattern that uh, even in the physical ayurvedic treatment surgery and uh, something very similar to uh, thermocautery was there but it is not in practice but we to uh, believe and uh, practice and advise that patient who need to get their tumors removed should undergo that and then come for ayurvedic but either because of any mental problem or uh, that condition is not viable for a surgical treatment or any other treatment we consider ayurveda as an alternative system instead of uh, conventional system there we try to monitor the patient with the help of the consultant oncologist that the progress is proper and uh, favorable for an ayurvedic treatment second is something which is in practice which is ethical and advised by the scientific community as well where the patient gets the best of both it gets the conventional medical system at the same time also gets ayurvedic treatment and uh, thus gets the best benefit and third way of treating is only for the uh, side effects caused by say chemotherapy hair loss of loss of immunity and uh, that is what is done in uh, the third style of treatment so this is in short in a short presentation i could speak about cancer and with a small prayer an indian prayer i would like to end the thing next one let all become happy and let all remain healthy thank you